So let's have a look at the 2024 Higher Level Maths Leaving Cert Paper 1 and this is question 10. So let's see, we have a company which grows and sells plants. The function w of x is defined below. It can be used to model the height in millimetre of water spinach plants for the first 35 days after it starts to grow. So w of x is equal to 0.667x plus 1.5x squared minus 0.25x cubed. Here x is the number of days after the plant starts to grow, where x is between 0 and 35. x is real. Now use w of x to estimate the height of a water spinach plant after 15 days. Give your answer correct to the nearest millimetre. Okay, so we have w of x is equal to 0 0.667 x plus 1.5 x squared minus 0 0.025 x cubed and we've got to find or estimate the height of the water spinach plant after 15 days so what we've got to do is find w of 15 so it's 0 0.667 times 15 plus 1.5 15 squared minus 0 0.025 15 cubed. So this again is just all calculator work. You can put all that into your calculator and what we need to do is once you get the answer uh, round to the nearest millimeter. So what you should get is 263 millimeters and that's to the nearest millimeter. Okay so let's have a look at the next part. Write down w prime x the derivative of w of x. So again remember w of x was 0.667x plus 1.5x squared minus 0.025x cubed and all we've got to do is differentiate it with respect to x so this first term here is going to become 0.667 this one here 2 times 1.5 is 3 times x and then we've got to multiply this by 3 here that's just going to be 0. 0.075x squared. So that's it for part two of A. Let's have a look at part B then. The height of a different plant can be modeled by the function p of x, where x is again the number of days after the plant starts to grow. The derivative of the function is p prime x is equal to 1.1 plus 2.73x minus 0.078 x squared. Find the range of values of x for which p prime x is greater than 24. So really what we want to do, it says here give your answer correct to the nearest whole number. So we want 1.1 plus 2.73 x minus 0.078 x squared. We want that to be greater than 24. So let's just bring everything over to one side. So I'm going to change, I'm going to put the x squared first and I'm going to change this sign. I'm going to change these signs here. So what you should get when you bring it over is 0 0.078x squared minus 2.73x and then minus, this is, a, I'm going to change that to a minus and bring this over as well. So you should end up with minus 22.9, which becomes plus 22.9 because I'm changing all the signs. Because I've multiplied across effectively by minus 1, I'm just going to switch that around to less than 0. So this now effectively just becomes a case of solving a quadratic inequality. So the first thing we usually do is find the roots of the inequality. So what we will do is let 0 0.078 x squared minus 2.73x plus 22.9 equal to 0 just to find the roots. Now in order to do this I'm going to use the minus b formula, the quadratic formula. So I'm going to say here x is equal to, remember a here is 0 0.078, b is minus 2.73 and c is 22.9. So x is equal to minus b, so it's minus minus 2.73, so it's 2.73, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so it's minus 2.73 squared minus 4 times a, which is 0 
and then we've got to multiply this by c which is 22.9. Divide all of that by twice a, 0 0.078. Okay, so you can mess around with that and you will get x is equal to 2.73 plus or minus the square root of 0 0.3081 and on the bottom 0 0.156. So that gives us then our two values for x. So x can be equal to, you just take the plus version, do it, you take the minus version, do it, you get two answers. And I've rounded those as well. So the answers are 21 days and 14 days. So there are two roots rounded to the nearest day. So really what we've got here is a quadratic that we had to solve. Quadratic, let's say, looks like this. Remember, it's this quadratic here that we need to solve. This is the one here we're going to solve here. So we want the left-hand side here, which is y, to be less than 0. We want y to be less than 0. So in other words, our two roots here, we just put a circle around them. Don't fill them in, because we don't want them to be equal to those two values. Those two values are, we found out, 14 and 21. We want y to be less than, less than 0, so it's going to be these values down here. Now the what we really want here are the x values, so the x values are going to be, we're not going to include that, we're going to include these x values up along here, and we're not going to include 21. So our answer then effectively is, so our answer is x has to be bigger than 14, and less than 21. And that's it. Uh, that's rounded to the nearest, the nearest whole number, or the nearest day, I think they say it, round to the nearest whole number. Let's have a look at the next one then. This is C. So in this case, we have the logo for a company is shown on the coordinate diagram below. The logo is the region enclosed by the three curves defined by the following functions, C, S, and K. So c is x squared, s is 2x minus x squared, negative quadratic, k is the image of s under axial symmetry in the y-axis. Use integration to work out the area of the logo. So it even tells us what to do here. It says find the area of the logo in the first quadrant and then double it. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to just find this area here and double it. So we're going to find the area underneath this curve here. So that will involve all the area underneath here and this white area here as well. Then we're going to find the area underneath this part of this curve, C of X. That's going to be the white area. We're going to subtract the two and that will give us this shaded region here. That's one way of doing it. So that's the first way I'm going to do it. And I'll just quickly check it doing the shorter way. So it, we're looking at the area then being equal to twice the integral from 0 to 1, because we're going from here to here, from 0 to 1, of 2x minus x squared with respect to x. And then we're going to subtract the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared dx. So that should give us our area. This is kind of the longer way of doing it, if you like. So let's do that then. So we, we want to integrate this function here. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, 2x. We, we want to increase the power by 1 and divide by the power. Here, we want to increase the power by 1, x cubed, divide by the power. And our limits would go from 0 to 1. Same over here, so we're going to take our x squared, we're going to increase the power by 1, divide by the power. And again, we are integrating from 0 to 1. So let's just finish this off then. So what we want to do here is take twice. Let's put 1, we've got to put 1 in here and 1 in here. But if we put 1 in here, we get 1 squared, which is 1, multiply by 2, you get 2. 2 over 2 is 1. If you put 1 in here, you'll get 1 cubed, which is 1 over 3. So we want to take that, and then we want to subtract what we get when we put 0 into both of those. Well, we put, if we put 0 in here, we'll get 0. 
If we put 0 in here, we'll get 0. So we're just subtracting 0 here. Okay, so that's the left-hand side one. Let's do this one now. So we're going to put, first of all, we're just going to put 1 in here. So that's going to be 1 cubed, which is 1 over 3. And then we're going to put 0 in here. That will give us 0, so we're subtracting 0. So this works out quite well. 1 minus 1 third is 2 thirds. And then we're subtracting, we're subtracting 1 third here. So 2 thirds minus 1 third is 1 third. 1 third times 2, 2 thirds. And that's it. That's our answer. That's the area of the logo. Now there is a shorter way of doing that. I'll just quickly do it over here. What you can do is simply uh, subtract the two uh, functions. So what you can do is take uh, 2x minus x squared and subtract x squared. So this was, this was this function and then this is this function here. We're just going to subtract them. So what we want to do is integrate 2x minus 2x squared with respect to x from 0 to 1. So when we do that, and again, by the way, we want to double it. So let's see what happens when we do this one. So it's going to be twice. This becomes 2x squared over 2. This becomes 2x cubed over 3. And we're integrating from 0 to 1. So this then becomes twice. If we put 1 in here, again, we get 1 squared, which is 1 times 2, 2 over 2, which is just 1. If we put 1 in here, we get 1, so we get 2 over 3. And then if we put 0 in here and 0 in here, we're just going to get 0. So we just got to subtract 0 from all of this here. Okay, so 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third. 1 third times 2, 2 thirds. So again, we get the same answer as we got over here. Slightly quicker way of doing it this way. Okay, so that's it for that part of the question. Let's have a look at part two. The function k can be written in the form k of x is equal to minus x squared plus bx plus c, where b and c are constants. Find the values of b and, the, and c. Remember that k is the image of s under the axial symmetry, or axial symmetry in the y-axis. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just see if I can find C. So if you look at, uh, if you look at the, the curve here, we've got the function k here. We've got the function k here. And we know that the point 0, 0 is on k. So let's do that first. The point 0, 0 is on k. So remember, k of x is equal to minus x squared plus bx plus c. So we know that 0 0 is on this curve. So if we put 0 there, 0 here, 0 here, we just simply end up with c is equal to 0. Okay, so let's now find b. So we, we know that c is 0. Let's find b then. So let's have a look at the curve again. So this is our curve here. It looks like minus 1 plus 1 is on k. So we can check that by just checking is plus 1 plus 1 on s. So is plus 1 plus 1 on s. Let's do that first. It looks like it is, but let's just check it anyway. So let's take plus, well let's take 1, 1. And we're going to see is that on s. Well s of x, s of x is equal to 2x minus x squared. So s, if we put the x in there, that'll give us 2 times 1 minus 1 squared, which is 2 1s are 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that's, that's okay. 1 1 is on s, so therefore minus 1 plus 1 is on k. So let's do that then. So we want to put minus 1 plus 1 into, so we put 0, 0 in first. We're putting minus 1 plus 1 into k now. So the y is 1, and we want to put minus 1 in there instead of x. 
Remember C is zero, so I'm not going to put anything in here. So let's see what we get. We get one is equal to, well, minus one squared is plus one. Plus one times minus is just minus one minus b. So bring this over, you get two, and then that's minus b. So that means plus b is minus two. So now we know what b is. b is minus two. So my answer then is c is equal to zero and b is equal to minus two. Okay, so let's have a look at part d. In this part, p and r are constants where p and r are real, r is between 0 and 0.9 of p. The company sells bags of plant food. The usual price for one bag is p euros. In a sale, the customer has a choice and they can either choose option 1 or option 2. Option 1 says that the usual price is reduced by 10% and then reduced by a further r. Option 2 says that the usual price is reduced by or, and then the new price is reduced by 10%. Which option 1 or 2, if either, is cheaper? Write the price of each option 1 and 2 in terms of P and or to support your answer. Okay, so let's just write down both of them. Let's write down option 1. Let's read it and just translate it into maths. So option one is the usual price reduced by 10%. So the usual price is P. So we want to reduce P by 10%. So it's 0 0.9 P. So if it was one, if it was one times P, that would be just P, which is 100%. We want to reduce it by 10%. So we're reducing it by one tenth. And then reduce further by R. So we want to subtract R. So that's the price if you take option one. Let's have a look at option two. So option two says it's going to be the usual price reduced by or. So the usual price is P. We want to reduce it by or. And then this new price is reduced by 10%. So it's 0 0.9 of all of this. So if we multiply that out, we get 0 0.9 P minus 0 0.9 or. Okay, so it looks to me like this is going to be the best option. So option one I'm going to tick and write down, support your answer. Okay, the reason for that is we, this is the, this is one price, this is the other price. That's the choice that the customer has. So in both cases there's a 0 0.9p, but in the first case you're subtracting or, in the second case you're subtracting a fraction of or. 0.9, you're subtracting 90% of R. So you want to subtract as much as you can from the 0.9p. So this here is bigger than this. So this would be the option you want to take. And that is it. That is it for question 10 and the paper itself. Not a particularly difficult paper overall, I think.